This is the uh, the train bridge that we're converting to the covered bridge. And this is uh, on uh, Glacial River Bike Trail, which is a county bike trail south of Fort Agnesen, Wisconsin, along State Highway 26. We're actually going to be mounting the bridge, the covered bridge itself, on the ends of these pier headers. These laminated stringers aren't going to be used, but they'll be there as a backup safety. The deck of the uh, of the covered bridge will actually be carried by the truss walls of the bridge itself. The authentic covered bridge carries its own deck weight. So in order, we're actually going to hover about three quarters to an inch above these stringers in order to uh, make our bridge uh, authentic. The covered bridge itself is going to be built out of an old barn that was dismantled. And the barn is located about a half mile from here along County, County Line Road. The barn is built in 1906, and this is the summer of 2000, so uh, uh, you do the math. The only thing that's not going to be original from the barn is going to be the deck and the deck choices. And we're incorporating a lot of the hardware taken off the rail railroad bridge itself. The Glacier River Bike Trail is part of the Rails to Trails effort. This means that the trail is built on top of an old abandoned railroad bed. This is the reason that the covered bridge was designed to look like a train caboose. This six mile stretch of trail was at one time part of the Chicago Northwestern Railroad Company's Janesville to Fond du Lac line. The railroad was built in 1859 and was in use until 1975 when it was officially abandoned on April 2nd. Some local people have said that they remember the day that the rails were pulled off and the ties taken out. It was the weekend of July 4th, 1976. Hi, I'm Craig. Let me show you what we got done so far, okay? Main timbers for the second wall that's going to be built, truss wall. Um, these are the tenons that we cut on the top of the poles. These are eight by eights. These large beams here, that's the top of each wall. Those are also eight by eights. And each of these is about 27 feet long. As you can see, this uh, this truss wall is uh, pretty big. It's about 51 feet long, about 12 feet high. I took the railroad ties off the bridge itself, stacked them up and made a little workbench for myself. I need to be able to get on both sides of the wall. This is actually the top of the wall. This is the top plate beam. Each of these 8 by 8 is called a king post. And this is the diagonal which is actually a brace. These haven't been um, cut or notched to fit in yet. I still got uh, three more to go. This is the lower cord. This is only halfway done. It's actually gonna be four separate beams laminated together with nails and then bolted together. It'll actually carry all the deck weight of the bridge itself. So right now I'm actually gonna get uh, ready to place this beam, gonna notch the poles so that it slides in there so it looks like this one over here. First you actually uh, you take the pole raw like this and I have a, a distance of six inches from the top of the lower cord up I mark it there and then six inches from the bottom of the top cord here, right here. then I lay the beam down so that it just touches that line I mark it there, find out where it touches on the back side, find the distance in the middle, and then cut the shoulder lap joint there. So right now I already got those cuts made. And what I do want to do now is now trace the outside profile of that onto this beam so that I can cut it out with my saw. 
making sure that they're lined up so that they're all the same. And then I trace. now is uh, start my cuts with this saw which gives a straighter cut and once I got it lined up and exactly where I want it then I'll finish it with this one because that one really chews through the wood One of the advantages of this being way up in the air is that it's easy to work off because it's a nice height to work on. But it's actually sometimes too high and I can't uh, get a full stroke on the saw unless I use a little step stool here. Now that I got that notch made in that pole, Set that end inside, double check my measurement at this end, and before I do that I need to put a nail in to keep this from falling down all the way through. Gotta make sure this is nice and tight. Set it and use them all. You're gonna secure it with two nails. These are 80 penny ring shanks. Later, we're going to take what I like to call a tie pin, which is a spiral nine and a half inch galvanized three quarter inch pin with a one and eighth inch head on it that actually came from the railroad bridge. We salvaged them from the, uh, the railroad ties when they took them off the bridge. And that will go countersunk in there, pinned just like that, right in the middle there. In fact, a lot of this hardware that you see at the top here is original off the uh, railroad bridge itself. This I'm using is as a, uh, a pin for my Morrison tenon joint that's inside here. The, uh, the tenon is about 8 inches wide, 12 inches high, and about 2 inches thick. And then there's a mortise that's 2 inches wide, 8 inches, or 2 inches thick, 8 inches wide, and about 7 inches deep. So there's a little bit of clearance in the top there. And then this isn't a true bolt that goes all the way through, it's just a bolt that was cut in half and then uses a pin to lock the mortise and tenon joint. Although these up here, these are true bolts that go all the way through because this is a laminated beam, there's a half lap right here. This is one beam, this is another beam. To tie those together, I use the original bolts off the bridge. And that's how far we are today. Both truss walls were built at the bridge site. The second wall was to be built at the same spot as the first one. In order to do this, the first wall was moved out onto the old train bridge. A large truck mounted winch was used to pull the truss wall off the rail bed and out of the way. The second wall took less time to build. 
The experience gained from building the first well really helped speed things along. laminating the lower cord but before I did that I needed to put in all the cross bracing first because of the camber of the bridge I'm gonna force this cord with this beam about an inch and a half I'm gonna flex it I'm gonna make it curve to the camber of the bridge but if I didn't put the cross bracing in first I would have straightened the bridge out and I don't want that to happen so I put all that in first and now we're gonna finish laminating this lower cord this one then and put it up to here and then cut all these to make sure that it fits between these notches and then trim them off the ends and then from there we put another layer of lath and then another layer of uh, four by eight and then it'll be done so Now is we're going to put our last layer of uh, lower cord on, laminating with 80 penny ring shanks. And since there's a three and a half inch or four inch camber to this bridge, we're actually going to nail it in section and then bend the beam against the curve of the bridge. We're going to be doing it in two sections. There's two beams here from the center all the way. So what we're going to do is straighten. Now he's straightened, but we're going to curve this board down there, I had to pull the tail away to match the curve going this way. So I'm going to start nailing here and as I go down I'm going to start pulling it towards that end. And that end, uh, we're going to have to use the uh, cat hook on to make sure we get it in place. But about two and a half inch difference on that end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tack it about every two and a half feet to get it to bend and then we'll go back and pound the rest of them in. I'm gonna need a little attitude adjustment here.
Once the first wall was set, braced and secured to the abutments, preparations were made to drag the second wall out onto the train bridge. Getting the walls set was a major step forward. This opened the door for more volunteers to come out and help with the project. All the roof trusses were pre-built and trucked to the site. They were set two foot on center with additional ones added directly above each of the king posts so that knee braces could be added to keep the structure rigid. The deck joists were made out of green treated southern yellow pine. These rough sawn 6x8s were placed one foot on center and rested on top of the lower cord of each truss wall. They were sometimes notched to fit around the bottom of the king posts. The top of the lower cord was intentionally set at an elevation that was higher than the top of the railroad bridge stringers. This way the joists would not touch or rest on the stringers. It is this space that helped make the covered bridge authentic. The original siding from the barn was reused to cover the bridge. It was originally painted red in 1906. Sometime after Old Man Johnson purchased the farm in the mid to late 20s, he decided to give all the buildings on the farm a fresh coat of white paint. After he was finished, the county came out and reassessed his property and raised his taxes. The story goes that Old Man Johnson was so upset about the tax increase that he swore that he would never again paint his barn. 
The gray weathered siding hadn't seen paint for almost 75 years. It was painted red again and is now owned by the same county that unfairly taxed Old Man Johnson. Instead of cutting out the windows after we got the siding up, we're going to pre-cut the siding before we put it up in the window. So I got a block on the bottom and the top because I want the bottom edge of the window to come out three quarters of an inch above this 2x6 and the top to do the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the top edge with my pen and then mark the outside edge of the window where it's going to be and I'll just connect the, connect the lines and cut it with my saw. January 20th of this year, 2000, I was uh, driving by and noticed that the uh, County Highway Department was out here working on the trail. They were uh, putting the, uh, right, uh, the bed down for the bike trail and uh, I noticed that they hadn't finished off this railroad bridge that they had, uh, they had crossed. So I uh, contacted the Jefferson County Parks Department and uh, told them that uh, I thought it would be a good place to put a covered bridge. And I caught them about three days before they were going to order lumber to put a regular deck and a railing system across this bridge. And so I uh, contacted uh, Joe Namer at the Parks Department and he uh, instructed me to get as much information as I could and uh, plans and uh, how much it would cost. And uh, about three weeks later I had uh, all the plans together and made a proposal to the uh, Parks Committee. And, uh, they agreed on contingent that I raised about $8,000, which would be half of the additional cost to put a covered bridge at the site, which is actually pretty cheap. Uh, the budget, I think, is uh, was put at about $26,000. Actually, the majority of the lumber actually came from a barn that was built in 1906. Um, Jeff Hillman was taking down a barn, and uh, a man named Carl Fairberg um, bought the barn from him and dismantled it. And uh, as I was looking for materials to build this bridge, I wanted to build it out of barn material. And uh, I found him tearing down a barn about a half mile from here that Jeff Hillman owns. and used to be owned by the Johnsons. That's his grandma. And so I uh, asked him if he'd be interested in selling me some uh, building materials to build a covered bridge. And he agreed. And the only thing new on this bridge will be the, uh, the deck and the deck choices. So, and it's, uh, we're building it as an authentic covered bridge. 
Um, all the deck weight will be held within the walls. And uh, we are secured to the piers, but the bridge is actually resting on the abutments. I used to build pole buildings for a living, or uh, pole barns. Um, buildings that have uh, steel siding, like machine sheds or barns, that kind of thing. And uh, my grandfather and my dad, they, uh, they both dabble. My grandfather is a, uh, a carpenter and a woodworker. And uh, he's been an inspiration to me. Um, I actually uh, have always wanted to timber frame a project such as a barn, uh, kind of like the Amish do, and they all get together. And I don't know when I ever will be able to get a chance to do that, so when this project came around, I was really excited about being able to timber frame something. And uh, I'm actually doing this as a volunteer effort, and everyone else who's working on this project are volunteers. Uh, we're working in cooperation with the uh, Jefferson County Parks Department. And uh, they've done a lot of work on the project. They painted all the siding, they moved all the wood. Um, they've uh, been a great help. They, uh, Jeff Hay or Steve Haft is the uh, Jefferson County Park Supervisor and he's done a lot of work in making sure that I have everything I need for the project. And, um, so I'm, I'm really excited about being able to uh, build a covered bridge. I've only been on a, actually one before this and that was out in Oregon. Um, there are only four authentic cover bridges in this state, and this will be the fifth. So, I hope everyone's able to enjoy it. Well, I've had a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, it all started when I went to most of the civic groups in town and asked for uh, simple donations to help me raise the money that I needed. And uh, word got around, and then they ran a nice article in the local paper. And then they also had an uh, article in the state journal in March. And uh, I've had a lot of people stop by, because this is a pretty... Um, high traffic state highway, Highway 26, and uh, we get a people occasionally stopping on their cars and getting out and talking to me, and then I got people on their bikes who ride up and want to ask me about the bridge, especially when it's going to be done. I get asked that a lot, um, but yeah, I've, I've only had positive positive feedback from all the people who I've talked to about this, and uh, I've had actually a lot of walk-ons, a lot of people who just show up know that I'm building and know it's a volunteer project and want to help out so um, I'm really grateful for that I wouldn't be able to actually get um, this building done if it wasn't for all the help that I've received so I really appreciate it To ensure a flat plane for nailing the siding to the gable ends, a half lap joint was used to secure these 4x6 siding nailers.
of the dedication of this, what I we're going to call now a landmark. And uh, we'll start off the little program that we may have all started here with our county executive, uh, county board chairman, I'm sorry, Wendell Wilson. Thanks, Gus. I think we started from the smallest and we're going to get taller as the program goes on. So, ain't this some? I want to tell you, this is really something out of this world as far as I'm concerned. But welcome to the ribbon cutting of our great Glacier River Trail Extension and Covered Rail Bridge Project. About four years ago, this month as a matter of fact, we cut the ribbon on the initial part of the bike trail. And that was quite an accomplishment in itself, and as we can see, it has really progressed over this period of time. It now runs from Fort Atkinson to the Rock County line. Hopefully, and it sounds like we have a good chance that Rock County will take up the ball and take the, the uh, trail much further into their county. I'm to understand this is the fifth colored covered bridge in the state of Wisconsin. I think that's really something. It's going to become a landmark. It's going to become a stopping place. We're going to find people from all over the state coming by to see this particular covered bridge. Uh, it's so unique. It's To me, it's out of this world, and we're just fortunate it's going to be in Jefferson County. Many, many people have worked on this project, and we have to thank all those. I'm not going to do that. Somebody else can do that. I'm afraid I might miss someone. But on behalf of the Jefferson County Board of Supervisors, and the 73,000 people in Jefferson County. This is our project and we're really proud of it and thanks for coming today. It is very difficult to find the words to express our gratitude for the man's dream, fulfillment of the dream. All things begin with the dream. Many are, many are started but many of them fail. But with a lot of perseverance and the hard work, one can succeed, as you can see here. A special thanks to the Craig Roost for his idea, dedicating, and commitment. There are several organizations and individuals who donated money and their time to assist with the completion of this project. I would like to thank Barry School, 1999 to 2000, second grade. Walter and oh. I didn't even know you were here. I just... <laughs> that's great. That's real great. David Ward, would you come up here, please? Well, thank you, Gus. And I think this is a great day for Jefferson County and a great day for this area. And I think it just goes to show what good things can happen when all levels of government and individuals get together, chip in, and work for a common good. And you got a person like Craig Roost who kind of spearheaded this idea, gathered everybody together, and, and we've got a great day, a great addition to the trail, and a great addition to Jefferson County. So thank you very much, Gus. And representative of the Tour de Fourth uh, Bicycle Club, uh, Mr. Drager, Mr. Drager. Thank you, Gus. On behalf of the Tour de Fort Bicycle Club, we're extremely grateful to Craig Roost. And um, I'm really amazed at all the young people that turned out here today. And I was I was really impressed by by the list of people who have either donated time or money or encouragement in the completion of this project. I think it's pretty awesome that in Jefferson County we've got this building. It's almost like if you compare it to bicycle trails anywhere, it'd be like a diamond, so a diamond on a bicycle trail. Um, we, um, I think I'm going to leave it go right there. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Craig, and thanks for everyone that com contributed. Well, Mr. Roost has just given me as tourism manager one more thing to promote in Jefferson County and Fort Atkinson in particular. 
just last month we unveiled the Rose Lake uh, Park and now we have this beautiful bike trail and this bridge and uh, if we can get the Indian Ford Dam issue resolved I think uh, Fort Atkinson and Jefferson County in particular are just uh, wonderful recreational opportunities here in this area and I just want to thank him for making my job that much easier so thank you Craig. Steve Nansen, I'm the second vice chair of the county board, and I just want to address everybody and say, let's not stop here. Our bike trails are expanding in the county. We have a bike trail planned for the county, and let's and a open and an open space referendum possibly coming up. Let's keep doing wonderful things like this in Jefferson County, in Jefferson County, and expand the bike trails through the whole county. It's I think it's a great alternative form of transportation, and I certainly think this is a great start. Thanks. Hi, I'm Steve Haft. I'm with the Jefferson County Parks Department. And uh, I guess I just want to extend a personal thanks to the staff. Uh, uh, the staff that uh, when we started this last uh, November, uh, this is quite an undertaking. And uh, I was probably hard on them sometimes. And uh, they performed really well. They did a great job. Uh, the bridge is a wonderful experience to work with the volunteers. And I just wanted to thank everybody that. Uh, uh, had to bear with me, so thank you very much. And now we will last to the dreamer himself. I told you in the beginning that all projects start with a dream, but you cannot all do it all alone. But he did much of this alone, and if you will look at the workmanship in this building, it's just amazing when they do it with a little chisel and and an old type of uh, axe or whatever he did use. Well, he'll explain it. Craig, please. I want to say, to begin with, that I did not build this bridge. Fate built this bridge. And for all of you who don't know what fate is, fate is something that you don't have control over. It happens. It's something that happens to all of us. It's something that is already going to happen in the future. You just don't know what it's going to be. And that's what happened at this bridge. Fate built this bridge. For some reason, I was meant to do this. I don't know why. But seeing all these people, I get a pretty good idea why. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Okay? And, be thank you. and before I get into this short, short story of how we built this, I want to say that I personally am dedicating this bridge to the memory of two of my classmates from high school. Their names are Jim Finley and Amy Smith, and their families are here today. For those of you who don't know the story, these two people passed by this site moments before their fatal accident on August 10th, 1986, on Old 26. And when I came to this site and was reminded every time I go through that intersection of what happened, I knew that I needed to build this in memory of them so that everyone from now until the end of time knows that their spirit lives in this bridge. So thank you very much. The long story of this bridge is that I drove by one day, realized that they were extending the trail, and the idea came to me to build a covered bridge on the railroad bridge before they were to put a deck and a railing system across it. And so I wanted to build it out of recycled lumber, so I found Carl Fairbert one day, man right there, and I uh, asked him if I could uh, have the barn he was taken down in essence. And he said, give me a list of everything you need. So I did. Um, I went to Joe Namer. Great guy. He put, helped push it through the uh, county to get it done. Um, Steve Haft, he made sure I had everything I needed. And uh, all the volunteers, I'd still be building this bridge if it wasn't for all the volunteers that came out and helped to put it in time. So uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll be around later. But uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Craig. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to have someone bring the ribbon up here. We're going to cut a ribbon. Hang on. Just wait, wait. One, two, three. Yeah, here we go. All right. How are you doing? All right.
plans if they continue building the trail? One more bridge. <laughs> one yeah, more I know bridge. there's I know there's one one more bridge, but uh, I don't know exactly uh, how big it is or what kind of condition it is. And uh, I actually, since I did this as a volunteer effort, and it's actually uh, been a a major toll financially for me because I've had to take time off of work to to really get progress made on it, especially when I have people waiting for me to want to help. I have to kind of get things set up. So if they do want to build another bridge, I'd be interested in at least helping, if not, uh, you know, be the supervising, you know, foreman on it. But uh, I think maybe next time I may want to be compensated financially. So, but no, I, I'm booked. I'd love to build cover bridges for a living if I could. So.